couple things we'll address while making this chili. And let's be clear, chili is not something native to the Caribbean. However, every fall and the spring, those chili months here in Canada, I usually make some chili and I put it in the freezer. Well, I also enjoy some, we enjoy some, but we also, the pot is big enough that some goes in the freezer. Tore it out, heat it up later on. Water and about three tablespoons of olive oil. The water is just to help, and I like sausages in my chili, so that's I'm starting with with the sausages in there first. That's gonna come up to a boil. I'm just gonna shake it that it's all that oil coated because I don't want to burn the sausages and I want to ensure that they're fully cooked all the way through. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna cook this until that water boils off, then you're gonna be left back with the oil. The oil is gonna brown the sausages and in the process, the entire the thing will be cooked all the way through, then we're gonna fish it out and continue. I have two things I want to address in this video while we do it. One, I will, you know, costing stuff, man. I, I, I had a rude awakening when buying ingredients for this chili. At the end, we'll total everything up, but I'll go through the entire process. As we go through the process, I'll, I'll show you the cost of everything. I'm just gonna turn my heat down just a slightly lower, so medium low. And the other thing is, if you've ever made chili or pasta sauce, bolognese, whatever it is, sometimes our soups as well too and stews we make in the Caribbean, it tend to stick on the bottom of the pan there. Pot. And you need a big pot, yeah? Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to start it on the stove, then we're going to move it into the oven where it's going to have like that slow, gentle heat which is going to be all around and it's going to prevent that sticking and burning because a lot of natural sugar is going to be in here. If you don't have a Dutch oven pot like this, it has a lid, you can see it over there. Um, you can, once everything is done on the stovetop, empty it into your slow cooker and let that go for about six to eight hours on that medium and you're good. Now, in reality, you really don't need to cook the sausages 100% all the way through because this is going to go into the oven for at least two or three hours. So it will cook later on. So what I'm going to do now I did have the lid on there to help it cook, well, sort of steam cook. I'm going to turn up the heat now to burn off the water we started off with and in the process brown the sausages. By the way, these sausages are bratwurst. I love using brats in my, my chili. Yo, it's one of my favorite sausages. I'll just put it that way. Later on, I'm going to put beef stock in here. If you wanted to put a can of beer or a bottle of beer, a lager or something in it, you can certainly do that. I'm not rocking that way this year. It's been about seven minutes. They're brown. And from the sort of density that, I'm, that I can feel, I know they're about 80% cooked, closer to 90% cooked all the way through. I'm just pulling them aside. I'm gonna allow them to cool down completely. And then I'm gonna chop them up into smaller pieces. Now I'm gonna add my ground beef. To the pot here and right away I'm gonna move it around to sort of deglaze the bottom of the pot and I'm gonna start breaking it up I do not like and I repeat I do not like chunky pieces of beef or any sort of ground meat in anything I eat so I'm gonna use the edge of my wooden spatula there I'm gonna hold on to this and I'm gonna keep hammering it away and as it cooks it's gonna break up into small pieces heat still on medium in case if you're wondering and that was medium ground beef if you wanted to use lean beef or lean turkey if you wanted to start it off with turkey sausages you can do that as well because I know some of you are squirmish about using pork I don't understand that but anyhow, I'll just eat it and I'm like crazy, you know, I'm worried about pork. Anyhow, let me keep cooking this down. Ground turkey or ground chicken will work, essentially. That's what I'm trying to say. It took another six or seven minutes for me to get it to where it is now. At this point, I'm going to go in with onions. Quite a bit of onion. going to hit that a stir. Celery leaves and everything. I'm going to mix that in. I have garlic. 
mix that in and I just want all of that to soften up now in the remaining fat from the olive oil where we started with. I did take out three tablespoons of fat after the I cooked the beef because again it was a medium ground beef. I didn't want to over over saturate it with fat. So I did take off three take out three tablespoons and removed it. A couple minutes later, a large carrot that I diced up as well as some cremini mushrooms and they're just cut in half that's all boom in there i like to wash mushrooms i know a lot of people well you watch those cooking shows on tv and everything and they're brushing it off with a little brush and they, they're good with that no i've seen where mushrooms come from i wash it and i air dry it time to start adding some flavor in there so I've got black pepper ground cinnamon some Worcestershire and that's gonna give it a deep, deep depth of flavor we've got chili flakes quite a bit of that because as you will notice I am not using any jalapeno in here lately the jalapeno peppers we've been getting in Canada has no flavor whatsoever nice and green and fleshy but I might want a little kick. Now if you wanted to add a little scotch bonnet in here, I mean to say if you love the thing, you love the thing. Mexican chili powder. Work that in and that is where that lovely chili flavor is going to come from. I also want a bit of ground roasted cumin, what we call jira, in the mix as well too. Now if you did use ground turkey or ground chicken, which can be very lean, you will need to add maybe a tablespoon or so more of olive oil or whatever oil you like using, yeah? Avocado oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, whatever it is you like to rock, you go ahead. Yo man, it's your album. You get to choose the music. For a deeper tomato kick, I'm going in with some pureed tomato, concentrated tomato paste. I'm gonna work that in. And by adding it now, it will get in contact with the hot oils on the bottom of the pot here. And it's gonna bring out the natural sugars in that tomato, giving it a nice sweet undertone. Of course, we'll need salt. And keep in mind, if you're using canned tomatoes as I am, that will have a bit of a sodium element to it. The sausages will have a sodium element to it. The kidney beans that we'll be using will have that sodium in it as well too. Balance means some brown sugar. I like adding some bay leaves in there. And I've been waiting for the opportunity to use this. I'm not associated with the brand, but I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, so we love we Angostura. So I'm gonna go in with a bit of that Angostura cocoa bitters, not too much. Oh gosh, lead, why are you on so? Anyhow, if you don't have that Angostura bitters, or if you don't want to use it, that's fine, but if you don't have it, you can put a bit of dark chocolate in here. Dark chocolate in chili is our best thing, yeah? So I'm just gonna continue cooking this here. I'm gonna turn my heat down to medium low. At this point, we'll add the sausages back to the pot all chopped up and everything. You want to get all that nice little drippings inside there as well, yeah? Don't waste. I'm also going to go in with one can of red kidney beans and that is a, a, a light red kidney bean. Got my beef stock in the same can where the tomato puree came from. And all we want to do now is bring this up to a, a boil before we put it into the oven. So if you're putting this into your slow cooker, now would be the time to add it. After it comes up to a boil, that is, you will add it to your slow cooker and then you would allow it to, to do its thing. Your oven, 250 degrees. And we're gonna put it on the bottom rack. But what I must mention is, make sure you have about an inch or so of space from the top, from here, to the lid I will put the lid on there because you don't want it bubbling over and making a nasty mess if it's too much in here it's gonna blub 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 bubble spill into your oven then you blame it Uncle Chris you want Uncle Chris to come and clean that stubborn oven I am NOT doing so 
it's starting to come up to a boil now. It only took about four minutes or so for it to completely come to the little bubbles. Well, not right now, but it was. I went into the garden and I got four small sprigs of thyme. And that is it. I'm just going to tuck that thyme down inside there. I love the flavor of thyme. So if thyme is not your thing, yeah, don't add it. You know, like, for instance, you're looking at this right now and you're probably thinking, well, Chris, where's the bell pepper? Mm -mm, Uncle Chris do not appreciate bell pepper. So sometimes I add it, sometimes I don't. In this occasion here, I am not going to pay $5 for one sweet pepper, what we call bell pepper here in Canada. No, I could do without that. One final stir and the lid's going to go on into the oven, 255 zeros or 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's going to do its thing on that lower rack. It's been in the oven for two and a half hours. And this is what we're left with. I did stir it once. Now if you wanted to remove some of that oil at the top here, you can do that, but I like mixing it in. This is fully cooked. What you need to do here to personalize things a little bit to your own liking, taste it for salt, which I already did. I didn't add any more salt. And determine whether or not the sort of consistency, thickness here is to your liking. Just keep in mind that as it cools down, it will thicken further. The last thing I like doing in here is to go in with some chopped parsley. And I'm using parsley instead of cilantro or coriander simply because lately I can't stand the flavor of cilantro for some reason or the other. I always hear people talk about how they can't handle cilantro and unfortunately I'm becoming one of those people. <laughs> Sup soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, Take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm mean, trying to tell people the email address, then butts will take me address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you all in the kitchen here with me. Enough. Caribbean, definitely not Caribbean. Yeah, you can fish out the bay leaves at this point. It's done its job. Mm. I'm telling you, boy, now, how do I serve this? For me, right now, as it's hot, I need two things. Some cheese, some grated cheddar. The older, the better. And I need some sour cream. That's the two things I like. I also like toasted bread with butter. That's it. However, you enjoy your chili, I urge you to give this one a try. It's, it's, you know, it's easy, but, you know, like I said, we're going to break down the cost. I hope you guys enjoy the fact that we can put it into the oven. You can put it into your slow cooker. It's totally up to you. Irie? Irie.